we are at Starbucks today, and here with me we have the beautiful, most amazing Itch Chua. Uh, Hello, hi. Itch. Hello, Sandra. How are you? I'm okay. I'm doing good. <laughs> How do you feel? You just finished an amazing, amazing set. Yeah. The acoustic set. How was it? Oh, it was really nice because I played with like an all-girl band to back me up. And this, it was really fun rehearsing and then actually playing the show because the show itself was like intimate and it felt right. I think my sound generally changes a lot by seasons um, and right now the album's called Bum Fuzzle because yeah. the album was an experimentation, sonically an experimentation of fuzz sounds mm -hmm. and the word Bum Fuzzle actually means to be confused or flustered so I think it's the, the state that I was in and that, I, that time of transit so the music is generally always honest but the sound evolves to the life that I'm living really. Someday. We'll be sharing laughs and talk over some cakes and tea. When do you decide that you wanted to move to LA? I decided to move to LA in late 2010, the beginning of 2011. And that was the first time I started actively taking all the money I earned into plane tickets and lawyers oh, to so make it a visa. Right? Well, yeah, I mean, it, it is, you don't know when it pays off, that's, that's the true. thing. It's so a very it, big risk. It's a risk, and but it's what you want, and once you zero in on that, it's about knowing how to get there. How is it like, the music scene in LA? Uh, the LA, I think LA is great. It's a creative company town where there's just full of creative people. You walk on a social level, when you just go out to the bar, you talk to anybody, you're always Someone's having great, something. interesting conversations. Um, but when it comes to work, I do feel it kind of works in it, it's because of just by it, geography, it's a bit sprawling. So it is spread out in general. So communities are all very fragmented and spread out. I stand in the comfort of love. Wondering who's gone missing. There's one spare cog in the machine. Okay, as a musician, you play with big, 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 big stages. Mm. You play really small ones as well. I've always preferred the intimate ones because yeah. like at the it, it, the songs itself kind of get to be able to be seen in its bare bones and that there's a lot of beauty in that and a lot of people like to see that as well so and it's a great time I mean when you do big shows sometimes you don't a lot of the fans don't feel appro like they can approach yeah. you so in this kind of a yeah, setting it's long, long to <laughs> say hello to it's really each nice to, to say hi as yeah. well you know I think I, I need it as much as they do. Wish I wasn't so self-aware Just like everybody else who doesn't So what made you tie up with Starbucks? I've always loved that Starbucks has worked with local artists in promoting the local releases and I wanted to, in this new age especially, when it comes to distribution of albums, I think there's not many left. There's not many CD <laughs> shops left anymore and uh, Starbucks have been so kind to be able to uh, put the albums out on the store counter fronts and in fact it's distributed island wide in every Starbucks and you know I think caffeine and music just kind of go together so it makes perfect sense for us to work together. 